The first Savage Mode, released in 2016, was the beginning of the horror-inspired collaboration between producer Metro Boomin and rapper 21 Savage. Metro's use of haunting elements over trap production made for a fitting reflection of the life 21 Savage described on the tracks. Over the years, the sound took a backseat while the two artists released their own projects, but Savage Mode 2 marks their return. This album has some songs that branch out sonically, like Mr. Right Now or Rip Love. But what about the eerie sound of the original Savage Mode? How do songs like Runnin', Guac In My Lap, and My Dog continue that horror aesthetic? What makes 21 Savage and Metro Boomin's Savage Mode 2 sound so haunting? The foundation of these horror-inspired songs are pianos, like on Glock In My Lap. Y'all need to stop playing, nigga. The piano part here only plays two chords. The first sounds like A sharp minor, although all you can really hear is that bottom A sharp, and the second sounds like D sharp minor. The key difference between these two chords is the half step between the F and the F sharp. Listening to a half step difference is pretty unsettling. So it sounds eerie when the second chord emphasizes that change from F to F sharp. The two chords in the song may be similar, but where they're played on the piano is very different. The first chord loudly plays a note at the very bottom of the keyboard, and then the second jumps up to the middle, nearly three octaves away. A jarring difference that makes this part even more uneasy. The sound of this piano also has some haunting elements. It starts as a normal grand piano with a bit of reverb. If this piano plays the same chords as this song, it doesn't feel the same. It sounds too clean. We need to add some detune so that each note is slightly out of tune in a random way. The piano on Glock in my lap starts the eerie sound of this melody with only two chords that are slightly different in notes but very different in position. This is compounded with a slight detune on each note to create a haunting start to the songs. These pianos are the most obvious part of these horror-esque songs on Savage Mode 2, but other instruments also subtly fill out the atmosphere. One of the usual choices is a string ensemble, like in My Dog. Just because I didn't remind you, don't think I forgot. Just because it ain't happened yet, don't think that it's not. This string part sounds like it only plays one note at a time. It starts on D sharp, matching the C minor chord in the piano, and then goes down to D, making a sort of C sus2 chord. These two notes again are a half step apart and create an uneasy feeling in the song. Strings are also able to hold out the notes at an even volume, balancing any space left by the naturally decaying sound of the piano. While this part may only play single notes, it seems to come from an entire string ensemble. String ensembles are a staple in classic horror movie soundtracks like Bernard Herrmann's Psycho or Vertigo, making them easy to connect to a horror sound. Here on My Dog, a string ensemble reinforces the half-step difference in the chords to set up an eerie atmosphere. The melodies of these dark songs on Savage Mode 2 can have almost any instrument, but they are still trap songs and need trap percussion. That said, Metro Boomin does throw in small elements to add to the haunting atmosphere. See if you can find any on Runnin'. Call the first one Savage Mode, my mood, that's what it was. If you didn't notice, there's a subtle cowbell roll panned a little to the left. This cowbell sample is repeated every other measure, maybe to make sure that you'll eventually notice. It comes in right before the measure ends and jarringly stops at the start of the next measure. Along with this cowbell are normal trap percussion sounds, like a closed hi-hat, a snare, and a kick. The songs on Savage Mode 2 are trap songs first, so they need this foundation of hi-hats, snares, and kicks to match that sound. Some extra percussion are quietly added in an unsettling way, like this repeated cowbell roll on Runnin, to enhance that haunting feeling. The basses on these darker songs are also constrained to trap sounds, although the 808s and subs pair well with that horror vibe, like the 808 on Glock in my lap. Y'all need to stop playing, nigga. The bass reinforces the haunting parts of the piano. It seems to start on A sharp, matching the note played at the bottom of the keyboard. When the piano jumps up to the D sharp minor chord, the bass also goes up, although not as much, just to a D sharp, and then an F. The bass here is an 808 that plays notes similar to the piano, starting low when the chord is low and walking upward as the chord gets high. Let's see if we can use these ideas to make an instrumental as haunting as these songs on Savage Mode 2. To recap, the foundation of the eerie sound was two chords played on a detuned grand piano. The half-step difference in the large frequency gap of the chords created a jarring and uneasy feeling. A string ensemble supported the piano by holding out notes from each chord, specifically the ones a half-step apart. Trap drums made up most of the percussion, with some added horror-esque flourishes, and there was an 808 roughly matching the structure of the chords. 
Let's start a new beat with the piano melody. There's not much to do differently here. There's only two chords, F sharp sus2 and F sharp minor, and there's only a single half step difference between them, G sharp to A. The first chord mostly plays a single low C sharp, with a few quiet notes on top. The second chord plays a more even spread of notes three octaves higher. To mix it up, I tried to emphasize the half step a little more by playing the A in the second chord on beat two, a beat later. The piano that plays these chords is a normal grand piano with some detune, so that each note is a little off. Next are the strings. This part plays the half step between the two chords, G sharp and A, as well as C sharp, which is in both chords. Since the piano didn't seem that different from the songs we looked at, I decided to throw in an extra, much higher string part. It has a little motion, going up and then coming back down, and only plays notes in the chords. I tried to make a string ensemble here by layering a few different string plugins. It's surprisingly difficult to capture the sound of a large number of strings. Now let's bring in some drums. The trap drums here are pretty straightforward. There's a hi-hat playing eighth notes with a few extra hits. The snare comes in on beats three and the end of one, and there's a kick that comes in occasionally. It's not only trap sounds though. I added a small perk roll at the end of every other measure with a little bit of panning. It's a small addition, but it does seem to make the beat more haunting. And finally, the bass. This 808 sample starts on the root note, C sharp, and then goes up to F sharp. Both of these notes are in both chords. It loosely follows the piano chords by staying low in measures one and three when the chords are low, and then going high in measures two and four. That's the finished beat, made from ideas in some of the eeriest songs on Metro Boomin and 21 Savage's Savage Mode 2. All of the orchestral instruments gives it a classically haunting feeling, while the trap drums and bass keep it firmly in hip hop. Hopefully this gets you to listen for spooky parts in other songs, and pulls the mask off of what makes Savage Mode 2 so haunting. Thanks for listening. Leave a comment and let me know what you think of Savage Mode 2. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.